All right, our next presentation. Uh, a lot of people love this animal. Uh, we're going to learn a lot about it today. It should be a good presentation. The Honey Badger, a.k.a. Raquel. Let's give it up for Christopher Justin Tan Ong. Hi, my name is Christopher Justin Tan Ong, and I'm going to talk about the Honey Badger, which is also known as Raquel. They look like that and that. That's one walking, that's one just walking. So first, I want to talk about how they got its name. Uh, honey badgers are called honey badgers because they love honey. There's sort of a big connection there because the first word's honey. And they look somewhat like a, a raging badger, which looks like that. And their other name, Rattels, that comes from an African word for rattle. And Rattels make a rattle-like sound when they growl. So their classification, what you really need to remember is their family, which is Masteldae. This includes weasels, wolverines, and badgers. And of all those, all those are closer to weasels. And they have their own subfamily, which is Malivarinae. Uh, that's because they're sort of unique. Even though they're called a badger, they're not really a badger. Someone just named them a honey badger because they sort of look like a badger. And then their scientific name is just Malivara capensis. So some of their physical characteristics include um, them having a white to gray top with black underparts and a white mantle darkened through age. So let's say a little baby Rattel has like a really white uh, top, uh, top, uh, and then it'll grow up, and then it'll get grayer, and it'll look like that. And let's say a little baby Rattel has sort of a grayish, whitish uh, top. He'll grow up to be like this guy. So now let's look at their body structure. They have a very muscular, robust body, uh, pretty stocky, um, and they have sharp, long claws, which look like that. Now let's look inside of them. They have an extremely strong immune system that can fight venom that actually dissolves human skin. Uh, and then their skin's really loose and tough. So that, like, let's say there's, this is a honey badger, this is a huge lion that bites the honey badger. He can just like turn around and bite it back. So some male and female differences. The average male length is 39 inches. That's from the tip of its nose down. So there. Uh, and the average female length is 31 inches. The average male shoulder height is 15.5 inches, which is from uh, here up, here up. 15.5 inches. The average female shoulder height is 14 inches. And the average male weight is 20 to 31 pounds. The average female weight is 10 to 22 pounds. So females are generally smaller than males. But a female could be bigger than a male, a barely. Now their distribution and habitat. So they live in a lot of places in Africa, parts of Asia, most of Africa. They're there. Uh, they can live in almost all conditions. So as you can see, this guy lives in like a desert place. That guy lives in, those two live in a uh, like dense rainforest. And he lives in a savanna. Okay, so their diet. They eat big food like large reptiles such as um, monitor lizards, some crocodiles, smaller ones, snakes, uh, like puff adders. This is where their strong immune system comes in. They also eat large mammals like um, whole calves, jack, gulls, uh, and foxes. And they also have smaller food. They eat bugs, birds, and scorpions. So that guy's eating like a little bug there. And even though they're carnivores, they do eat roots, fruits, and honey. And 8% of its food is from digging. That's why they have really strong claws. Now the human relationships. There's the bad ones and the good ones. So some of the bad ones include uh, how they attack humans when they are frightened. Uh, they raid barns, they dig under foundations to eat at livestock, and uh, a lot of humans kill these creatures with traps, gums, and poison because they don't like them. And there was a time in Kenya where a honey badger killed 17 ducks and 36 chickens. That, those are just the bad ones, there's some good ones, like how they're protected in many countries and reserved by some people like that person.
Uh, now their conservation status on the IUCN land list, they are least concerned, but they are decreasing mostly, mostly because of humans and their ways. Okay, now reproductive characteristics. Bertels mate year-round. There's not really a certain mating season, but most Bertels usually mate later in the year. No, and this is how that happens. Uh, so, like, a male may have, like, a huge home range, 500 kilometers, about 300 miles. This could include 13 female home ranges, about 100 to 150 kilometers. Uh, the male sort of play with all of them. It took side of that. Uh, and then the babies will come. They're born in a burrow, blind and naked. The mom will have one to four babies. This is just a female in its cub. Yep. Next. So the parental care. The male will protect the female when she's in ostrich or when she's pregnant, but uh, she will be ditched later on when the baby actually comes out. So uh, then the mother will change dance frequently when uh, she's taking care of the baby. So if it's a male by eight months, he'll be as big or bigger than the mother, and by 14 months, the babies will be let go. So that's just a little a blind baby, a uh, little hair growing. And that's just a still a little baby out in the wild. Next one, longevity, morality, seasonal patterns. Uh, what tells it to be t about 26.4 years old in the wild and 26.5 years in captivity. I think they live longer in captivity because in the wild they eat like snakes and stuff and they could be bitten and they'll just pass out for like a really short amount of time and then they'll just, just wake up. Uh, but that may shorten their lifespan by like 0.1 years, which isn't that much. And then their seasonal patterns, that includes being nocturnal in the summer and diurnal in the winter. Um, diurnal is just awake in the day and sleeping at night. Nocturnal is um, awake at night and sleeping in the day. And they're usually nocturnal if they are affected by human activity. Next one. So associations and defenses. An association is where the honey badger helps an animal, or um, an animal helps a honey badger, or it's a win-win for both. So animals follow Rattels around a lot because, as I said, they dig a lot. So 4% of the food that Rattel digs actually goes above ground for other animals to eat. So the only win-win situation is when the honey guide comes. The honey guide's a bird, which is that. Uh, the honey guide will leave the Rattel to, like, Honey, and then the until we eat the honey, and uh, the bird will eat the larva. So now the defenses are pretty cool, but they need like tons of maturity, a lot. So the first one, the retail will secrete foul-smelling anal glands, which is also known as fart. So let's say this is a little honey badger. It's hurt. This is a lion. Uh, lion comes. It farts, so the lion will go away. That's pretty good strategy. Now the next one, uh, it's pretty weirder. Uh, the honey badger will sort of rip off uh, <laughs> animals, testicles, it was bigger. <laughs> so uh, like this wildebeest, there have been numerous attacks on wildebeest where honey badger goes right there. Uh, and yeah, there have been I can't some attacks like still. these on humans. So fun facts, the first one, 1972, a honey badger did kill a lion by going for the testicles. Next one, pretty straightforward. The top speed of the honey badger is 15 miles per hour. That's actually not that fast. Next one, the most fearless animal in the Guinness Book of World Records is the honey badger. I agree with this because they do like attack lions and wildebeest, and these things are like less than 30 pounds from there. And uh, another fun fact, as I said, their skin's really tough, and their skin can easily stop a machete from angry farmers, uh, some arrows, and some bullets, but a high-powered rifle would easily kill it. So the honey badger skull is constructed so it can sort of lock. So um, sometimes the honey badger won't let go until he, the enemy's dead, or he himself is dead. Next one. A females' territories sometimes overlap, and they're really territorial, so they'll pee on the ground to signify their presence. Next one. This is sort of my overall view of them. They eat almost anything. Uh, they 
have genius defense mechanisms. Their skin can stop a machete. Uh, they can live in all climates, and they're fearless and carefree. So that's sort of just my overall view of them. Uh, now, next is my we're excited, and now it's a video. This is a honey badger, uh, sort of beating up a monitor lizard. The African savanna, a notoriously fearless and aggressive mammal, protects its home from a bold and ravenous reptile intruder, a terrifying turf war caught on tape. Meet the combatants. In one corner, the honey badger, a skunk-like mammal with a muscular body weighing just under 30 pounds. They are voracious predators, and they, they're very good at defending themselves. They're very low to the ground. They have sharp claws, sharp teeth. The opponent, a ruthless reptile. The monitor lizard can grow up to 10 feet long. The biggest thing the monitor uses its, is its tail, and that usually whips around and is very, very strong and can also cause a lot of damage. Now hunting its next meal, the monitor dares to invade the badger's turf. It's a deadly mistake. Coming out of its hole, the honey badger's rudely awakened by the monitor who'd like to eat it for lunch. The lizard violently swings its tail, hoping to pummel the badger, but it misses. In a single swift move, the badger pins down the monitor with deadly claws. Next, it disables it with devastating jaws. So the badger has very sharp teeth, and once they subdue the head there, the monitor really can't do too much. Clamping down on the monitor's head, the honey badger takes its first bite, claiming the bloody spoils of a meal that walked right up to its front door. Yeah. Okay. 